August 6, 1945 is an important date in world history. The fateful day on which the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima in Japan, August 6, the day the bomb fell on Hiroshima. Also happens to be when the Catholic Church annually celebrates the Feast of the Transfiguration. The New Testament tells how Jesus went up to a high mountain and was transfigured before his apostles Peter, James, and John. The book of Matthew reads in 17 to his face shone like the sun, and his garments became a white as light. First hint, similar to what the residents of Hiroshima would have seen seconds after the bomb was dropped. It exploded with a blinding flash, creating a giant fireball, which vaporized practically everything. In a radius of about a mile of the point of impact. It is estimated that up to 80,000 people were directly killed by the blast, and by the end of the year, that figure had climbed considerably higher, due to injuries and the effects of radiation. Over two-thirds of the city's buildings were completely destroyed. Everyone else within a radius of roughly 1.5 kilometers was reportedly killed instantly, and those outside the range died of radiation within days. But in the midst of this terrible carnage, something quite remarkable happened there was a small community of jesuit fathers living in a presbytery near the parish church which was situated less than a mile away from detonation point well within the radius of total devastation and all eight members of this community escaped virtually unscathed from the effects of the bomb their presbytery remained standing while the buildings all around virtually as far as the eye could see, were flattened. Father Hubert Schiffer, a German Jesuit, was one of these survivors. Aged 30 at the time of the explosion, and who lived to the age of 63 in good health. The only physical harm to Father Schiffer was that he could feel a few pieces of glass in the back of his neck. In later years he traveled to speak of his experience. And this is his testimony as recorded in 1976. When all eight of the Jesuits were still alive. On August 6, 1945, after saying Mass. He had just sat down to breakfast when there was a bright flash of light. A terrific explosion filled the air with one bursting thunderstroke. An invisible force lifted me from the chair, hurled me through the air, shook me, battered me and whirled me round and round. Father Hubert Schiffer raised himself from the ground and looked around, but could see nothing in any direction. Everything had been devastated. After the conquest of the Americans, their army doctors and scientists explained to him that his body would begin to deteriorate because of the radiation. Many of the Japanese people had blisters and sores from the radiation. To the doctor's amazement, Father Schiffer's body contained no radiation or ill effects from the bomb. He had a few quite minor injuries, but nothing serious. And indeed later examinations at the hands of American army doctors and scientists showed that neither he nor his companions had suffered ill effects from radiation damage or the bomb. Father Schiffer attributes this to devotion to the Blessed Mother and his daily fat in a rosary. He feels that he received a protective shield from the Blessed Mother which protected him from all radiation and ill effects. Along with his fellow Jesuits, Father Schiffer believed that we survived because we were living the message of Fatima. We lived and prayed the rosary daily in that home. But in a strange parallel to what happened at Hiroshima. The Franciscan friary established by St. Maximilian Kolb in Nagasaki before the war, was likewise unaffected by the bomb which fell there. St. Maximilian, who is well known for his devotion to the Blessed Virgin, had decided to go against the advice he had been given to build his friary in a certain location. When the bomb was dropped, the friary was protected from the force of the bomb. So both at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 
we can see Mary's protective hand at work. Whether the world has war or peace depends on the practice of this devotion, along with the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is why I desire its propagation so ardently. Especially because this is also the will of our dear Mother in Heaven. Sister Lucy on March 19, 1939 during her July 1917 apparition at Fatima, Our Lady said to Lucia, I shall come to ask, that on the first Saturday of every month, communions of reparation be made in atonement for the sins of the world. On December 10, 1925, Our Blessed Mother again appeared to Lucia at Pensvedre, Spain. Our Lady then spoke, See my daughter, my heart encircled by thorns with which ungrateful men pierce it at every moment by their blasphemies and ingratitude. Do you, at least, strive to console me? Tell them that I promise to assist at the hour of death, with the graces necessary for salvation all those who, in order to make reparation to me, on the first Saturday of five successive months, go to confession, receive Holy Communion, say five decades of the Rosary, and keep me company for a quarter of an hour. Meditating on the 15 Mysteries of the Rosary The elements of this devotion therefore consist in the following four points, all of which must be offered in reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. One should make this intention before carrying out Our Lady's requests. This confession can be made before the first Saturday or afterward, provided that Holy Communion be received in the state of grace. In 1926, Jesus Christ in a vision explained to Lucia that this confession could be made a week before or even more, and that it should be offered in reparation. before receiving Holy Communion. It is likewise necessary to offer it in reparation to Our Lady. Our Lord told Lucia in 1930, This Communion will be accepted on the following Sunday for just reasons, if my priests allow it so. So if work or school, sickness, or another just reason prevents the Communion on the first Saturday, with this permission it may be received the following Sunday. The Rosary is a vocal prayer said while meditating upon the mysteries of Our Lord's life and passion and Our Lady's life. To comply with the request of Our Blessed Mother, it must be offered in reparation and said properly while meditating. also offered in reparation. The meditation may embrace one or more mysteries, it may include all, taken together or separately. This meditation should be the richest of any meditation. Because Our Lady promised to be present when she said, those who keep me company. To those who faithfully follow Our Lady's requests for the five first Saturdays, she has made a wonderful promise which she as Mediatrix of all graces, will certainly fulfill. I promise to assist at the hour of death, with the graces necessary for salvation. After completing the five first Saturdays, one may continue the devotion simply to console the Immaculate Heart of Our Lady. A tender love of Our Blessed Mother will lead one to do all he can to make reparation for the sins which pierce her immaculate heart.